brought to you by Digital Wood Carver and Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Wood Carver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. that blow y'all's ears out holy camoly what was that laney that was bad 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 timing <laughs> sorry about that everybody lord of mercy that's what happens when you don't hit the mute button on your <laughs> on your microphone <laughs> all right sorry about the blowout let's see here if i can type that out for you sorry about that all right <clears throat> i hope everything is going well with you guys hope you had a good weekend and uh i know some of you um <laughs> yeah one heck of an entrance uh, i know some of you i've uh, been monitoring the facebook group and i know some of you are uh you know having some technical difficulties and just things that you need uh some help working out and i really appreciate everybody jumping in and helping uh, one another uh, with questions and answers and stuff and uh, I'm gonna go through and see if I can <clears throat> you know try to help out as well and get some you know get get everybody on track again um, I want to welcome everybody <clears throat> let's see if I can uh, from the ones that I see here give a quick shout out to uh, Jared Ripperda, Joe CV and Ronald Sand, Doug P, Peter H, Tim Gouda Loafers Corner, still got to get that first name, uh, Loafers Corner, I keep forgetting who that is, uh, Tim, Vern, Glenn, Jimmy, Antonio, welcome everybody, and I'm sure a lot more will be popping in shortly, um, but uh, I hope y'all had a good weekend, hey Debbie, how are you doing there, um, I hope y'all had a really good weekend, we had a great weekend in uh, Columbus, Ohio, at the Columbus Show, I want to thank uh, everyone for coming out and seeing me. Hey, Don. <laughs> Thanks, Don. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, Wayne. Uh, but uh, we had a great show. And my, uh, you're going to hear some heavy breathing in the background. My uh, lovely assistant has just come down to lay down at my feet. She wants to uh, uh, be a part of the class. Um, the... And my lovely assistant has a four-legged pet. <laughs> it's not some, there, nobody was just crawling in uh, to lay down on the floor. But uh, um, things have uh, been going well. Welcome, Ken. Uh, at the shows, uh, we, had, we had some great shows and everything. And I want to thank everybody that stopped by uh, the booth and saw us. And I look forward to seeing you on the upcoming shows. We're going to be in Tampa next weekend, or this weekend coming, should I say. We'll be at the Tampa Woodworking Show so all you Florida residents, uh, digital wood car owners, come on out and uh, say hi. And uh, then after that, we're going to be in Indianapolis and then St. Louis and Kansas City. So look forward to seeing you guys, uh, you know, in those upcoming shows. And then I believe, uh, you know, we've got we've got some later shows, too, that, uh, you know, we'll mention in upcoming classes and all. So tonight we're going to... Um, talk about monograms we're going to do some creative designs with some monograms and and uh, earlier on earlier classes and all we we touched a little bit on monograms and stuff uh but we never really got into actually creating a, a nice decorative monogram design or designs and uh, i want to throw out a couple of designs to you guys and girls uh that uh you know for door hangers wall art whatever the case may be that you might be able to use and uh, that'll give us some ideas on welding our trim tool uh, importing vectors and a few other lessons in in tonight's class and uh, 
you know, uh, at the same time, we're going to have a QA and a uh, tonight, and I want to talk to you guys about uh, some of you have kind of already started to transition or, you know, started your transition period over to um, TNG and things, and uh, just know that right now, uh, we don't have the setting files uh, for the TNG for the fourth axis or for the mini carver yet. I'll be posting those uh, probably tonight or tomorrow, I'll try to get them out there to you. Uh, for you individuals that have the mini carver or you want to do some fourth axis and you decided to change over to the TNG. Um, also, we uh, I want to I want to kind of uh, we've, we've got uh, some of you have received your uh, DWC quick set uh, for those that, that you had that have ordered and placed your orders and you haven't received yours yet. Uh, they are going out this week and everything to you. Uh, we were waiting on one particular part and stuff. But I want to talk about that. I want to go over that at some point in time, you know, on the setup and, and use of that tool. And um, But also, I want to start talking about TNG a little bit from time to time and, and see if we can get maybe a class or something on that so you guys know what you're looking at. Because it is a little bit of a different environment than the CNC USB controller. And I uh, don't want you all lost. All right. Well, with that being said, we've uh, it's 7:06. Let's go ahead and transition over to our uh, CNC USB. Not CNC. Let's transition over to our Vetric software. Everything that we're going to be doing tonight is applicable to Vetric VCarve Desktop Pro or Aspire. And um, the uh, so any whatever program you have, uh, you know, tonight's class should be applicable to you. All right, let's see here. Let's transition, see if I can do this properly. Ooh, the microphone should be on now. Uh, no sound yet. Uh, testing one, two. We should hear me now. Um, and give it a second. Give it a second. It'll pop in there. Um, I, uh, I always forget that. You guys always uh, point me in the right direction. So you'll see here in just a minute. All right. <laughs> All right. Now we're on track. So we've got a, um, uh, for tonight, we're going to do a single sided project and we are going to be cutting through the material. So we definitely want to have a waste board on our table uh, as we're cutting through and we want to um, make sure that uh, we have uh, <clears throat> our clamping depending make sure you have a little extra waste material for your clamps and everything because we will be cutting out a big profile we're going to be cutting out a big shape and so this is going to be a single-sided job and for this i'm going to kind of go um uh kind of square in a sense so i'm going to go uh we'll go 18 by 18 square and for the thickness, uh, for the door hangers, you're either going to be working with quarter inch material material, or half inch material. Very rarely are we going to be uh, cutting the monograms out of uh, three quarter inch material, but there's, you could, you know, there's nothing with that. But I'm going to set this up for some quarter inch uh, uh, material and uh, just know that it could be, you know, either or quarter or half or whatever you got. But I'm going to set it up for some quarter inch material, just little door hangers and all. And uh, we'll go with there. So now I will be referencing off the surface of the material for the Z0 position. 
And for the XY datum position, I will be using the DWC quick set, so I will be working off the bottom left corner for that XY datum position. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click OK, and uh, we'll get in here. Now, <clears throat> you can make your project whatever size you want. You know, you know you on the big carvers, you have a 24 by 40 cutting area. On the mini carvers, you have an 18 by 24 cutting area. Uh, you can make your monograms however big that you want. I'm just doing an 18 by 18, so it does apply to the individuals that have the um, the mini carver and things. Now, uh, the the first thing we want to do is uh, I want you to let's pop out of this screen for a minute and let's look at our digital wood carver group. Okay. Uh, in the Digital Wood Carver Owners group, in the file section, we have files. Uh, and you're going to have a zip file that I'm going to upload uh, this evening after the class uh, with some monogram files, uh, Vine monogram files, uh, DXF, EPS, AI. They're going to be in a zip file, uh, but these are the monograms we're going to be using in the class tonight. So they will be uploaded in the file section of the group. Uh, this evening and also for you newcomers that are new to this and new to the group and everything and you happen to be watching this video uh, in this group you will find lots of different uh, files uh, project files instruction files uh, PDFs uh, model files the, the the group has been awesome about sharing things uh, but one of the things I definitely want you newcomers that are just getting your Vetric software and getting things set up, the one thing I do want you to do is I want you to go to that file section. I want you to scroll down and click on See More and go to that second page and kind of scroll down a little bit further. And I want you to look for the file that says DWC Owners Group Speed and Feed Chart. In that speed and feed chart uh, will be your uh, recommended, uh, you know, default speeds and feeds for the bits that are kind of defaulted in your Vetric software. And the default numbers are running hundreds of inches a minute and things like that. We want to slow them down. So be sure to follow this speed and feed chart uh, for when you're setting up your tool database. That being said... Um, this is where you're going to find a lot of project files and tonight's class files, the monogram files will be uploaded. If you never got them before from a previous class where we worked with them, they will be uploaded tonight and they are located in the digital wood carver owners group file section. And you will be able to see the post of that in the discussion, of course, where we are posting, you know, uh, you'll see me, you'll see my post and, uh, with that file being uploaded. All right, that being said, let's go back to our Vetric program and let's get into this. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do a, uh, a, a pretty basic uh, circular design, but we're going to do our family name and everything along with the monogram. So let's get the shape drawn first. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a circle and I want my center point of my circle to be at x9 because remember I'm at the bottom left corner so I want to be nine inches over on the x-axis and I want to be up on the y9 because I'm working at uh, with an 18 by 18 piece of material and nine by nine uh, x and y is the center point of that board that working area there so you can see as I put my mouse over here you see that crosshair and you'll see that nine by nine so uh, I want a uh, 18 inch diameter circle so I'm gonna create that <clears throat> and it should take up my whole work area there awesome sauce alright now from here we are going to write a uh, some text in uh, the border of this circle and then in the middle of this circle we're gonna have a monogram for our family name or whatever it could be and yes I am recording uh, and this is uh, recording and um, going live uh, thank you Tim for that question always good to have a reminder um, the 
first thing I want to do is I need the space. I need that area where we're going to be writing our text and stuff. So I'm going to take and select the circle. And by clicking on the line, it turns pink. That means it's selected for those of you that are new and uh, you know wondering how to select an object. By the way, anything we draw in our working area is an object. It's either a vector object or a text object. Uh, and uh, this object is selected, so it's pink. And so now I want to go into the Offset and Layout tools over here on our Drawing tab. And I want to click on the Offset tool. And I want to offset inward. And I want a, I want a decent size border. Uh, so I'm going to go an inch and a quarter for the border, and I, it's a circle, so I don't want to, I don't need to create sharp corners, but I'm going to go, I'm going to offset inward an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to click, uh, uh, click offset, and as a matter of fact, that still, that's not big enough, uh, you know, because I'm going to have some text in there, so I'm going to undo that, and undo is the control Z key, or we can right click on the screen and click undo, and I'm going to change that, I'm going to go two full inches, two inches. There we go, uh, much better. And so uh, now we've got our offset. And so now we have some area in here to, to write some text. And so I'm gonna close the offset tool. We're finished with it for now. And I'm gonna click in white space to deselect that uh, object that was selected, that, that offset that we created. And now I'm going to open up the draw text tool and we're gonna start out with the family name or, or what have you. Uh, for this, um, let's, uh, let's, let's say that this is, um, <clears throat> the, uh, oh gosh, what's a good family name? Uh, let's see here. The, and well, I'm going to go all capitals too. The Reynolds, Reynolds family, Burton Linda. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Reynolds family. And I'm going to choose a font. Now, the font can be anything that you want it to be. Uh, it could be any decorative style, any kind of uh, really anything. I'm going to use what's called the News uh, BT font. And um, that font is available on dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Uh, if you can't find the News font, there's three different fonts. Uh, if you can't find the News font, let me know, and I'll upload that font file uh, to uh, the Facebook group as well because it's a font that can be used both personally and commercially for free. So I'm going to use the, uh, the news font and I want it to be bold. So I'm going to click on bold and since I have a two inch clearance here, I'm going to go, what am I going to go? I'm going to go two inches. Let's go two inches uh, full on and click apply. And now, because I'm starting at the bottom left corner, and that's where my X0, Y0 is, and that's what I had for the anchor point, that's where it dropped the name Reynolds. And so I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. You'll see these boxes pop up. That means it's in transform mode. And I'm going to come over and just drag that just somewhere on my screen, uh, you know, just somewhere there uh, for right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, just click into white space to deselect that and I'm going to type in the word family and we'll go ahead and uh, still two inches I'm still going to click OK and that'll drop in because that's where the last place I clicked my mouse so you can see that anchor position had changed uh, to where I clicked my mouse and uh, we're good to go there so I'm going to go ahead and click close and I'll go ahead and I'm going to center these up now. So I'm going to select on um, Reynolds, select on family, and I'm going to open up the alignment tool. You'll find that under the transform objects menu, the last icon. Uh, we're going to open that up and we're going to center. It doesn't matter, you know, you know how I center. I'm just going to click this middle center button and just uh, center that uh, that way. And then I'm going to make sure that, uh, let me uncheck this and just check the word family. I'm just going to click on that and get that centered up because uh, Reynolds is already centered. Now, you can see on the Reynolds that my N and Y are touching each other. That's going to change because we're going to arc this. Uh, this, is good. this name is going to come up here and the family is going to come down here. Uh, so that's going to change. So I don't need to space it out. But if I did want to space it out, the edit 
text spacing and curve tool, which we're gonna be using anyway, is the third icon on the third row of the Create Vectors menu, Edit Text Spacing and Curve. And with that, I could click on Reynolds, and as I put my mouse between any two letters, you'll see the V and A pop up, two letters with two black arrows pointing inward, meaning that if I were to left click my mouse, they're gonna move inward. But if I hold my Shift key down, you'll see those arrows change colors, and I could you know, spread those apart. Um, but I don't need them spread apart uh, right now because it's gonna actually spread apart as I curve this. Now, while we're in the Edit Text Spacing and Curve tool, I'm gonna grab this top node here and I'm gonna pull Reynolds up, 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 up. And uh, you know, I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm gonna just bump it up here and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab that node again and just kind of balance it out, keep moving up till I get you know somewhere in there. Now looking at that, uh, I probably overshot by going two inches tall. Uh, I want those lines to you know uh, over. I do want some overlap on them on, on the lines, but <clears throat> maybe not so much. But let me let me get my curve cleaned up. I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit and. Yeah, no, I didn't overshoot it too much. Uh, we're, we're, we're good, I think. Ah, nah, let's resize it. I'm gonna bring it down just a, just a smidge. So I'm gonna go to my text tool here and uh, I'm gonna bump that down from two inches to one and uh, three quarters. And oops, click on your text. Now I'm gonna change it to one and three quarters, 1.75. And notice it straightens back out, which is normal. So we're gonna open that edit text spacing and curve tool and we're gonna grab that curve and pull that back up again. And I'm gonna come in here and we'll get it. Let's see, I just wanna smooth it out. Now I'm using the edit text spacing and curve tool. Uh, to to get in uh, you know my text where I want it now absolutely there are more than one way there is more should I say not are more there is more than one way to skin a cat and what I mean by that is I could come in and draw an arc here and use the wrap text along curve tool uh, to wrap that text rather than using the edit text spacing and curve which I'm doing here, uh, I could use the wrap text along curve tool. And what that would look like is for me, I would come in here and grab the draw art tool. Somewhere right about here, I would click, left click to create an anchor point and I would drag my mouse straight across, uh, making sure I got a nice straight line. And click again and then I can pull that up and I'm gonna pull that right up and snap right to this arc here and click again. Let me turn off uh, smart snapping and see if that slows down my cursor from blinking and everything going crazy. Uh, still get some things going on there. But now that I've created that curve and I'll move that curve down so you can see it. Uh, now that I created that curve, I could absolutely come in and uh, open up this tool here uh, the text on a curve tool and I could grab the curve select the text and that'll turn the tool on because I have to have both the curve and the text uh, created and I could I want to maintain the text size or I could scale it to fit the curve whatever the case may be uh, I want to be above the curve I want to be in the uh, middle of the curve and I want my text to curve with the curve aligned to it so if I click apply it would wrap to that and then I could uh, close that tool and just bump this up until my arc was right back on my line and I'd be, you know, good to go. So there's a, there's a couple of ways that you could do it. Uh, there's, uh, you know, quite a few ways. Now, uh, another way, another way, if you wanted these texts to be right in the center of these lines uh, here, then we could just go ahead and we know that we're offset two inch. I could select this rectangle here. I could come into the offset tool and offset outward from this line one inch. 
and click offset and that'll give me kind of a center line here and with that center line I could come into the node editing is under edit objects and I could come in and just somewhere pick a spot any spot uh, you know somewhere right about here I'm going to cut the vector you'll see a node pop up there and kind of straight across from there or, you know somewhere around about straight across I'm gonna right click and cut the vector there and what I've done now, if I go back into my selection mode, I've created a arc, just like we did with the earlier arc, um, but it's in the center here. So now I could open that text on a curve tool, select that arc, select that text, and I could scale it to fit the curve, or again, maintain the text size, but this time I wanna be on the curve on the curve right in the center I want everything centered in there I want to be in the middle and I want it to align to it and I could click apply and that would line it up now notice everything shifted to the right a bit uh, so I'm going to scale this to uh, fit the curve and I'm gonna bring that scaling down just a little bit and but notice that this shifted a little to the right uh, more so you know where the R is and there's some spacing issues with the R and the E I need to bring that R down some and so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let me let me get my spacing right here so we'll go just a little bit right there and then I'm gonna close that tool and I'm gonna go into the edit text spacing and curve tool here again and I'm going to spread holding my shift key down I'm gonna spread those two apart a little bit and the uh, same thing with the D and the L and you know what have you you could do that you know um, for me that's a long roundabout way of getting the text in an art you know it is centered you know it is centered in here and everything and all but I I prefer the quick and simple method of edit text spacing on a curve but I wanted you to know how you you know there's more than one way to accomplish your you know your goal so let's uh let's go ahead and um let's go ahead and i'm gonna undo i'm gonna kind of undo and get back to where i was get rid of that offset and everything let's go down i'm, I'm just undoing undoing you know i want to get rid of this arc let's click on that arc now and delete it and <clears throat> i want to edit the text spacing and curve and you know I want I like this freehand you know kind of pull up and down so I want to go ahead and just get it in position and I like that there all right so there's Reynolds now you don't need the long explanation again let's get rid of uh, thank you Chris Gray for subscribing I appreciate that uh, you don't need the long explanation a second time for the family we're just going to do the same thing but since I know that family is two inches tall and I went down to an inch and three quarters I'm gonna go ahead and open up the text tool and I'm gonna reduce family down. Oh, it's already reduced to, wow, look how good I am. Let's see here, is it? No, it's not, I didn't think it was. I'm gonna bring that down to 1.75 as well. All right, now I'm gonna open the edit text spacing and curve tool. This time I'm grabbing the bottom green node so I can pull that down here. All right, and let's get that in position now I'm a little too steep let's back her up a little bit there we go all right so notice how uh, you know I'm kind of with my arc and everything here uh, family the, the L and the Y it's almost like it's kind of tilted a little bit it's not but it, it, it is so we need to do a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of rotating. And so, but before I do, let me make sure I'm, I'm going to pull that down to there. And let's, uh, I'm going to get the F. This is what I'm focusing on here, the F in family. I want to get it where I want it. And that's where I want it. And now... I can come in and I can rotate, uh, you know, family 
around this arc, you know, all that good stuff and everything. Let me undo that. I don't want to do that. But what I want to do, what I actually want to do is I want to rotate pivoting off of the F. I want to pivot this side up, you know, of the family. So I'm going to open up the rotate tool here and I'm going to select on uh, family. And with the rotate tool, I want, I need my coordinates to, um, uh, I need my coordinates to be this bottom left corner. So this rotate pivot point that you see right here, this circle, this dual circle, I'm going to drag that over to the bottom of family and just kind of snap. And I don't have smart snapping on right now, but I'm going to kind of snap to that corner. And I will turn smart snapping back on uh, to do this. And um, let's zoom in. Yeah, I was way off. So let's snap to that corner right there. That's what I want to pivot off of. And so now when I grab uh, these anchors and all, now I'm kind of pivoting off of that corner. And so all I want to do is I want to pull this up a little bit to kind of get in there, you know, like so. All right. All right. All right. So <clears throat> that looks good. Um, the I'm going to close the rotate tool. I'm going to grab Reynolds little high on the end and everything a little bit of gap space there let me see if I can pull that down just a little bit edit text spacing and curve slightly ever so slightly just kind of pull that and adjust that a little bit more right about there okay so now we got our Reynolds family now uh, keep in mind we're gonna be cutting this text out okay we're gonna be cutting this text out so when we do that on the R, the O, the D, the A, those areas that that center piece uh, needs something to hold on to. It's gonna it's gonna want to fall out, and I'll have a big old hole right here where my family is. So we need to make some changes on that. But before we do that, let's get our monogram in the in the game and. Uh, Hey, Rain Man, how you doing, buddy? Um, for, let's get our monogram into the game. And so let's. this is a vector file. So we're going to import vectors using the file operation tools fourth icon, import vector, because it is a DXF file. And we're going to open that up. I'm going to navigate to my Vine monogram files. And I'm going to grab, it's R for Reynolds. So I'm going to come down here to R and I want the center monogram, the R vine center. And so I will open that up. Now when that opens, it opens huge. If we zoom out, this thing is about 99 inches tall, you know. And so it's a big file. That's why I'm going to provide these files to you. It's a very clean, big file. And so... We need to size it down, of course, appropriately. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything with the R. So it's all selected. And then I'm going to group it together as a group. And I have two ways that I can size it down. One, I can open up the size tool and transform objects. And you can see it's you know about 103 inches tall. And I can size this down. Now, I know that my circle was one inch or 18 inches I offset two inches in so I have an inside circle of about 16 inches so my height needs to be at least under or around that so I'm just gonna type in 16 just to get me you know close to home and I'm gonna click apply and from there I can use my alignment tool and align to the center of my project or I could have used F9 the shortcut code to get to the center and with that, now I can kind of zoom back in. And, and even at 16 inches tall, we're still a little uh, tall there. So, um, you know, in our in our height, um, which is weird because I should be at 16, right? Let's go and let's look at my size there. 14. What's this one then? 18. Ah, two inches and two inches on each side is 14. Four. Okay. All right, see there, got to do the math. So we need to make this R, we need to resize it to 14 inches in height and click apply. 
And even that, that's still a little tall. So I'm gonna use the transform mode now and I'm gonna hold down my shift key so it stays centered and I'm just gonna grab this corner node here and I'm gonna drag it down um, to get it sized how I want. Now, the one thing I want is I want this outside of this R to overlap these lines here, okay? So, all right, now I have a big old gap in the middle and I need them to overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in transform mode. Holding my shift key down, I'm gonna drag this up a little bit more until it overlaps. And there we go, I've got a good little overlap here, 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 and here. All right, so we're good to go with the R. <clears throat> All right, now, uh, with this, uh, we're going to go ahead and ungroup that R. Click on ungroup or the letter U on your keyboard, either one, but ungroup is located under the Edit Objects Tools, uh, first row, four, fifth icon. And now that I've ungrouped that, I'm going to use this scissor tool, the trim, interactive trim tool. And I'm going to come in here and zoom in, and I'm going to trim away this line. Let... Uh, Let things uh, catch up to itself for some reason. There we go. I'm going to trim away those two lines there. I'm going to come over to the other side. Again, I'm trimming away this line here. Oh, when it does that, we don't want to. We don't want to do that. So undo Control Z to undo. We don't want to. We don't want to uh, trim away that line. So uh, let's get that trimmed away properly. This little nub here as well. Oh. See that? I want to untrim that one as well. So let's not do that. Control Z. So now that I've done that, I'm going to grab this middle line here and go ahead and trim that. Now, I should have the ability to trim this line away down to there. Now, this little floater right here, the scissor tool might let me trim away those things. Uh, if not, you just select it and delete it. Now over here, let's go in and we should be, you know, well snapped with each other. Now you see that little gap right there? It, it's not quite closed off. Well, that should go away when I close this tool because I have the rejoin trimmed select sections automatically when this form is closed. So if I close that form, it should pull those two ends together. All right. So we've got that uh, connected there. Now let's come on down here. And let's, and by the way, let's look at my D. I did have a little bit of overlap. No, it's not there, good. All right, so let's come over here and let's trim away the interactive trim tool. Let's trim away this line. For some reason, my, my Vetric has to think today. Uh, usually it's a little bit faster than that. There we go. Trim those two away. And then last but not least, let's trim this line away here. And then trim line that line away there. And what we've essentially done is we have uh, taken this R for Reynolds and we have made it part of this border. This border area here and the R, this is going to be the wood. All of the stuff around the R and everything is going to be cut out and gone okay and uh, so now we've got that so this monogram is just a few steps away from being finished we just need to kind of uh, do some work on our a and our r and o and d we, we don't want these parts falling out when this piece gets cut and um, you know that's 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 a major no-no so just to give you an idea, let's go ahead and create a tool path so you can see what we're looking at, what you're, you know, what uh, we're looking at, and um, so you can see what I mean. I'm gonna select on Reynolds. I'm gonna select on Family, and I'm going to uh, create a profile cut. And this is got to be a small end mill. It's got to be a very small end mill, sixteenth or something for something this size. Uh, maybe an eighth of an inch might get in there. We'll find out, uh, but. I'm cutting, you know, through my material, 0.25. Um, I'm going to use an eighth inch in mill. We'll see how well that does. Does, but I want to be on the inside of the cut, and I'm going to calculate this toolpath. Okay. Now 
<clears throat> notice a couple of things. One, one, there's parts. Of, let me quick zoom in and out on you. Uh, let's change this um, to a maple so you guys can see what's going on here. There we go. Uh, notice that parts of my R are missing, parts of my E, Y, N, and, and everything. You know, that's because the bit couldn't fit in there. So it didn't create a toolpath in those areas. It only created a toolpath where the bit could cut. So that tells me right away that my eighth inch end mill is going to be a little bit too big for this small 18 by 18 project, you know, to carve out inside those letters. So I'm going to switch over to my 16th inch end mill. Now, if you don't have a 16th inch end mill, uh, pretty soon you'll be able to order them from us at digitalwoodcarver.com. But in the meantime, you'll be able to order them. Uh, from a mana uh, like places like tools today and things like that, uh, you know, they sell them But eventually we'll start selling the little 16th inch end mill and um, We're gonna go ahead and hit on select and I'm gonna go into the uh, 16th inch end mill now if you don't have a 16th inch end mill you want to carve a design like this and everything then make your project a little bit bigger make your two inch offset make it two and a half inch you know give it give you give that band around the monogram a little bit more width uh, so your letters are a little bit bigger and look at different fonts uh, you know this font isn't very fat in very areas you know but if I use something like a Rockwell bold or, or something a, a Tahoma font where it's kind of a block letter and all then you know I could have used my eighth inch in mill but I'm gonna change to the 16th inch in mill and I'm going to recalculate that toolpath. And there we go. You can see now all of those letters pop back in there. Okay. Now let's look, let's, let's, let's come down to the bottom. I'll hold my control key down on my left mouse button. I'm going to drag this up and you can see family looks good too. We got some, we got toolpaths in between there. Now here's where, here's where our problem lies. Um, is uh, this is where our problem lies and this is why we got to make some changes is if I were to preview this selected toolpath okay and I let's let's say I clear away the waste material you know here well what's gonna happen with my a I got a big old hole right there right you know so we don't want that um, you know, uh, I don't need to clear out all these, but you get the idea. The A is missing. Well, let's look up at the top here and let's see what's missing there, uh, which, of course, you can guess it. We've got the R, you know, that's going to be falling out. There's no center of the R. The O, that's going to be falling out. There's no center there. And then, of course, the D. Oops. And so that's not going to work for us, you know, for, for that. So we need to uh, create some bridges little bridges and stuff and so let's start with the R over here and um, uh, create a bridge we need to open this up almost like a stencil font and a stencil font would be uh, excellent uh, with this and uh, Steve Brenneman says use a v-bit um, use a v-bit all right Steve we're gonna we're gonna try that in just a minute we're gonna you well, well, here, let's, let's, uh, you guys, uh, you know, you, you know what's happening here. Now, Steve, keep in mind, I'm cutting these letters out. I'm cutting all the way through. Okay. So I'll use a V bit. I'll, I'll use a V carve toolpath because I want, I want the option. I'll do a V bit with the option of a flat, you know, uh, cut, but I don't know if I want uh, my V bit uh, cutting all the way through. Let's see here. Let's try a profile cut with a V bit just to see. Let's see what we do here. Um, and Steve, you can you can elaborate on that too inside the uh, um, the group chat too, so you can explain. Uh, what the v-bit option is going to do for us. so let's click on profile let's calculate this let's reset the preview and let's see what's going on here well see with the v-bit with my v-bit and everything my letters are missing you know um, and uh, so 
not quite appropriate in this, but let's use a V, let's, let's change it up a little bit. Let's use a V carve toolpath with a V bit, and then I'll use a small end mill to clean up. I'm gonna cut through my material and click calculate. Okay, and let's see what happens now if we preview this toolpath. And let's see what we get. That's a that's a different look, you know. It's unique, you know. That's a, that's a different different kind of look, but it's cutting through some places, not through in others, and all. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not. It's not jumping out at me, but it's an option. So a V bit. All right, let's uh, let's go back in. And uh, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, if I did something wrong there and you, you, you've got another option or something, let me know. But I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to delete that. And let's go back into this profile cut uh, with our 16th inch end mill. If I can find it again. End mill. There it is. <clears throat> All right let's go and fix some things so I need to bridge uh, this is all wood right here and everything and when it cuts out this R I need some way that you know this center area doesn't fall out I need to kind of bridge it here and here so uh, for me I'm just going to very simply create a rectangle and um, Doesn't have to be very wide. I'm gonna double click on that rectangle and rotate it, not off its center. I need to rotate it on its center, not off coordinates. And rotate that. I'm gonna drag that down. And scale this up. And I'm gonna rotate that a little bit more. Right about there. And that way I can go ahead and use my interactive trim tool and trim. I don't know what's going on with my interactive trim tool this morning. Ah, I won't trim because it's text. So I got to convert the text to a curve. Convert to curve is on the text tools here. This T with these little nodes around there. We need to convert that to a curve. And now we can go ahead and trim. So now I can go ahead and trim and just kind of open this up. All right, so that'll tie that R into the rest of the wood there. Uh, let's go over to our O. And once again, I'm going to just use a little rectangle tool. Doesn't have to be very wide. I'm going to rotate that. Let's close that tool. Let's rotate that. Gonna move it over. Yeah, right about there looks good. Use my interactive trim tool and let's trim those lines away. Okay. So that'll tie that O in and then one more with the D and then we'll do the A. Let's do the D. <clears throat> it's going to draw a rectangle again doesn't have to be very wide and uh, double click on it throw it in transform mode let me stretch it out a little bit more I'm going to rotate that a bit and drag that down and make it a little bit bigger and let's kind of straighten that up some we're basically creating kind of a stencil for these parts here. Uh, so let's go ahead and trim those lines away. All right, so that takes care of the D. So 
we've got Reynolds. And let's go down and take care of the A for family. And for the A, um, I'm just very simply going to uh, just cut this line here and just kind of open this up. So what I will do is I'm going to, uh, I'll still use the rectangle tool. Actually, I'm not going to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to use the line tool. And I'm going to uh, right about right about here. I'm going to snap a line. And then right about here. I'm going to snap a line. And then I'm going to use the interactive trim tool and just, oh, got to turn family into a uh, curve, an ob from a text object to a curved object. And now I can use my interactive trim tool and I should be able to clean those away. Okay. All right. So that's all the cleanup we had to do uh, with that. <laughs> now, with this, we can go ahead and um, we should be able to select the entire project. Uh, and with our profile cut cutting through a quarter of an inch, we can be on the outside of the line. The software is smart enough to know that if we're cutting on the outside of the line that there's inside vectors there. So it'll cut on the inside of the line. But let's make sure. Let's, let's just uh, you know uh, see if uh, everything goes well. And... Um, I can use my, I, I, I don't really need to use my 16th inch end mill to do the whole thing, but it doesn't hurt. It's not a big project, so that bit, you know, uh, it'll be pretty fast cut. So I'll just go ahead and keep it with the 16th. And I'm going to calculate this just without any ramps or without any uh, tabs for right now, uh, just to see, make sure everything cuts properly. So if I reset this preview and I preview this toolpath, I should be able to delete this away. I want to delete my waste material. Go through and I'm just double clicking on the waste to delete it. Even this little, oop, get that one away. And then we'll get rid of the last little bit of waste here. All right, so that looks basic. It's very basic, just very basic, simple circular monogram. Um, there's a few little splinters still left in that M and things. Uh, let's control this up. And if I zoom in real tight, I can double click and should be able to. Oh, nope. All right, too many little scraps and all, but let's take a look at this as a whole. Let's see here. Not bad for a basic little uh, little monogram, uh, you know. Not not bad. Let's 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 get into something a little bit fancier. But there's there's a you know uh, a nice little you know monogram that can hang up, you know, on a door or the wall or whatever. I would probably make the band a little bit wider, and I would space the Reynolds and everything in the center of that wider band so it's kind of floating a little bit better, uh, you know. But even at that, you know, still not bad, not bad at all. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to turn that layer off and um, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to click on this to make sure it's active. And that way I'm working in that new layer now. And let's go ahead and bring 
once again, we're going to do a circular cut, a circular kind of uh, monogram. And this time I'm just freehand drawing and I can snap to the edge of my board to create that 18 inch diameter circle, you know, just freehand drawing. And uh, for this, I am going to use a offset. And for the offset, doesn't need to be that wide. I'm going to offset inward one inch. There we go. And then I'm also going to create a rectangle. And on that rectangle, I am going to open up the alignment tool. The alignment tool is the last icon in the transform object menus. Uh, and I am going to make sure that is dead center. Okay. And then we're going to bring in a monogram. So import vector from a file. And this time I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with the letter C. Just for kicks and giggles. All right. So now if I turn on that layer one, uh, our C popped up on that layer one for the vector. Uh, let's go ahead and while it's selected, I'm going to right click and move it to layer two. So that way I can turn layer one back off. The reason why it went to layer one because this is a vector. And when I imported the letter R, it created its own vector layer. And so all vectors that I'm importing from this point on on the same job are coming into that layer. Uh, with this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, group the uh, C back together again. Let me deselect. I just had to reselect everything. So I'm just going to click on holding my shift key down to deselect these items here. And I'm going to group together the letter C and I'm going to size this down using the size tool. We're about, uh, I'm going to go 16 inches. And I can drag this over and snap to the center. I can use the F9 key. I can use the um, alignment tool, align to center, any way that I want to get it onto the board and into the center. Uh, we can, you know, we can do. Now for this, I will uh, go ahead and throw it in transform mode by double clicking on it and drag this down. Oop, not that much. The orange line is kind of a shadow, you know, uh, that you, you, you're seeing uh, things create. And all I'm doing is I'm dragging this up until I get a nice overlay. That's good. I don't need to go any further than that. Oh, stop. All right, a little bit too much. Um, my software is a little slow tonight. I think it's because I got all the recorders and stuff going. There we go. I just need a nice little overlay, overlap of all of uh, that stuff. Now, uh, let's say that their last name here, and I'm going to select this rectangle, and then I'm going to open up the draw text within a vector boundary box. Okay, draw text within a vector boundary. Now, before I do that, I need some ridge wood here, you know, so I'm going to... I'm going to offset this box in inward a quarter of an inch. Create sharp corners, offset inward a quarter of an inch. There we go. Now with that inner box selected, now I'm going to use the draw text within a vector box. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and write in the last name. Let's say that these uh, guys are the uh, chambers. Chambers. All right, and uh, I want it to be centered in the box. I want to stretch the characters vertically. I want them to be definitely tall as the box. Horizontally, I'll do manually, so I'll leave that at none. And I don't want any margins, no margins, and I want to click Apply. All right, and so... Um, We've got no margin centered, uh, stretched vertically. There we go. All right, now 
I want to close this tool and I'm gonna double click on this. I need to bring chambers into the monogram area. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key. I double clicked on it to put it in transform mode. Holding my shift key so it stays centered. And I'm gonna grab and drag this in just a little bit. Not much, just something. Right about there. And I'm gonna drag, I'm gonna grab this middle upper box here and I'm gonna drag this so that those letters overlap that inner line of it. Okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to do some trimming on this uh, border and everything. But before I do that, I want this inner rectangle here I want it to be trimmed around these letters. I'm just using the word chambers here as a template. That text will get deleted in a moment. Uh, we'll delete it in a moment, but I want to use it as a template. So I want to, first things first, I want to make sure that my letters are overlapping the line by somewhat. They don't need to be overlapping that much. So let's bring it down just a hair. So I'm gonna come into the center here so I can double click on this and see my center node. I'm just gonna zoom in, holding my shift key, knowing that my top and bottom is going to uh, you know, a scale evenly. If I hold down my shift key, I can grab this down and just come down just a little bit. All I need is a very small amount, amount of overlap down the top and bottom. All right, now, when I do that, the chambers is going to be my boundary, okay? The rectangle is the object that I want to clear around that boundary. So if I open up my, in not my interactive trim tool, which is the scissors, but my trim tool, which trims a selected object to a last selected boundary or object, if I open that up, it says here, select the object you wish to trim, my rectangle. Hold down your shift key and add another object to the selection, which would be holding down the shift in the chambers. And then that last selection will become the boundary. And I want to clear everything inside of the boundary. Okay, inside of the boundary. Now when I do that, when I do that, You'll actually see here, if you can see the pink lines, it actually redrew the lines and redrew them around the text and everything. And so now, if I come in and click on the text and delete it, I'll just use the delete key to delete it, you'll see the chambers in there that has been kind of grouped in to that border. Now I can come in with my interactive trim tool and I can do some trimming. So let's go with the interactive trim tool and let's clear away this line and this line. Let's zoom in and clear away this line and this line. And then I need my border and the borders of my top and bottom here to be blended together. So I'm gonna trim away this line, get rid of these two lines and trim away this line. Okay, to connect all that together. Now I'll come back and we got to do some trimming in the middle here for the letter C, but let's go back over here to this side and let's rinse and repeat. So we get rid of these lines here and then we're going to open this up here and here. This makes that constant wood, you know, constantly go through. This is all going to be wood here. Now on the C, I've got some C that uh, you know is going to uh, get trimmed away and things. And you know, you might look at this and say, you know, I really, if I trim this away, I can't really see that that's a letter C, you know, because it's a kind of a big chunk of it is getting cut up in here and stuff like that and things. Well, let's uh, let's let's fix that. Let's fix that. How would we fix that? Well, one. Let's just cut it apart, this lower part away from the rest of the top, and then we'll cut the top part away from the rest, and we'll kind of move the two halves separately. So if I come into the node editing, node editing on edit objects, I'm gonna come right in here, 
And I'm going to select on this um, vector with my node editing. And let's uh, try that again. There we go. And it won't show the node because it's grouped together. So let's ungroup it. Be fair. Let's ungroup it. All right. Now let's go into node editing. And we should be able to see our nodes. Pop up. Pop up nodes. Pop up nodes. Where's my nodes? All right. Stand by. Ah. There's a lot of nodes. That's why. All right. So. I am going to pick two nodes, any two nodes, doesn't matter, uh, just pick a node, any node, and um, I need to pick a node up here, so I'm going to come way up here, because we're going to just be moving this down so much, so I'm going to grab this node way up here, and I'm going to cut it there, and then I'm going to click on, select this, and I'm going to grab somewhere, just somewhere up here, because it's going to get trimmed away, but I'm still cutting up high. And you'll ask, why are you cutting up high? Because I'm going to be moving this lower part down, but I still need the overlap of the lines here. So let's go ahead and now let's get out of node editing mode and let's select our lower part of our C, all the vectors. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys and I'm going to bump this down. Okay, I don't really need the, the lot of loops, so I'm going to come down quite a bit, and we'll come right about there. Yeah, right about there. All right, and now you see that I kind of uh, you know overshot my line and all. That's fine. That's what the extend tool is for. Under edit objects, the third row, second icon is the extend tool. I can click on that. I can click here and here to extend that line back up. Click here. And up here, well, let's try that again. Oh, oh, zoom in, bam, and bam. So it connects that. Wonderful, wonderful stuff there. Um, and now on the upper one, let's select all the upper vectors. And let's bump that up a little bit. Just so it kind of looks like a C. I can actually go up a little bit more with this. And you know what? I could actually... Uh, chambers doesn't have to be centered. Uh, so um, I can actually bring that up a little bit more. Right about there. And uh, I can bring chambers up into this open area here. All right, so we'll leave that there. Let's get, let's grab chambers. And um, how do we grab chambers? Well, the easiest way is to uh, just redo the rectangles and uh, write the name chambers in and just re-trim again. Or we could do node editing. And uh, I'm all about you know challenging you guys to learn these things. Uh, so we're going to use the node editing option here. And we're going to uh, come in and go into node editing. And I don't know why my node editing is acting up this morning. Acting up, acting up. Come on now. All right. We're going to select this vector and then go into node editing. There we go. I'm going to cut this corner node right here. We're going to cut it. Cut vector. Uh, and then I'm going to cut, I'm going to click on this one here and cut this one. So I basically cut those away from the side frame there. We're going to come over here and we're going to cut this vector. Come down here and cut this corner vector. Okay. And what did we accomplish by cutting those four vectors? Well, now this is able to, you know, freely move up. Now. But Laney, when you do that, it throws off the circle of the center of the circle on the edges and things like that. How do we fix that? Very easily. I'll show you. Hold on a minute and I'll show you. All right, let's get chambers where it needs to be. Right about there. That's fine. That looks good. That looks good. All right, 
so how do we do that? First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this half of this circle. And we're going to delete that. We're going to take this half. We're going to delete that. We're going to grab this outside circle and offset it inward, back inward, one inch as we had it before. All right. And then with our interactive trim tool and our extend tool, we're going to clean up this area. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the extend tool and we're going to extend this line to the edge there. Let's look at the other side. Do I have to extend this one? Might as well while I've got the extend tool going. Extend that to there. All right. Now we're going to come in and we're going to do some trimming. And I want this line. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. Uh, can't you just weld that? You could weld it, but it creates a little bit of a different uh, pattern because a weld deletes everything from within the center, and we don't want to, uh, you know, delete everything from within the center. But yes, you could weld it. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll, we'll explore that in just a second. We'll see if the weld tool works as well as well. Um, I know the trim tool clearing inside the boundary works perfectly every time, but there's always, like I said, there's always more than one way to do it, Glenn. So let's, we'll take a look at that. But first, let's go into node editing mode and let's um, take an, I need to extend this line right here. So why is my node mode killing me today? I'm going to cut this vector right there. Cut it. Ooh. And then let's look at the other side, see if I got to do the other side the same way. Yeah. So I'm going to select on this and cut that there. All right. Now that I've done that, I'm going to use the extend tool and I'm going to extend this line that I just cut from here to here. Nice work. And then on the other side, extend this from here to here. Okay. Now I can use my interactive trim tool and I can go ahead and just kind of start cleaning up some things. So clean that up, clean up this one, clean up that line. So we're back in business. Going to come over here. We're going to trim away this line here, that line and that line. We're going to come down and trim away this inner line and this here. We're back in business. Now we can get rid of, and we got to do some extending and stuff. So let me do that first before I trim. Let's extend this line from here to here, this line from here to here, and then go back into that interactive trim tool and let's clean that up. You know, that connects all of this down. And let's get rid of uh, this line that's running through my A here, here, and there. Kind of that ties that C into there. And then let's do some of our outside trimming. So let's get rid of, you know, this stuff. Oops, my C wanted to disappear. Let's undo that. And let's come in and trim this line away and this line away. Then we should be able to get rid of, oh, it's wanting to clear that away. So I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. And when you zoom in, it'll let you, it'll kind of, oops. Come on now. There we go. All right. Let's come over here now. Let's get rid of this big old swoop there. This we don't need anymore, so we can get rid of it. There's still a little dot right there. Let's see if we can clean that up. Get rid of this line and from here to here. Now we've tied that into that. Let's come down here and Clean up these two lines. Clean up this line and this line. And then last but not least, clean that up. All right, now I got something floating right here. We're getting rid of that. And that's what was floating was that line right there. You see, that's an open vector. We don't want that. So let's go ahead before it causes us problems and let's close that line off. We're going to join with a straight line and close that open vector up right there. And that occurred when I was moving things. All right, so now we've got, uh, here's our second uh, monogram style right here. Very cool. And I wanna go back to Glenn's uh, here in just a second. I wanna go back to Glenn where he said, can we just weld this? And I wanna see how well that works. 
Uh, but first, let's create the toolpath for this. Again, this is going to be a profile toolpath cutting through our material. This time, I can use an eighth inch end mill. Should be able to use an eighth inch end mill. And I want to cut on the outside of the line because I'm cutting this out. And we know that the software knows that we're smart enough or it's smart enough to know that we have inside vectors. So it will reverse the toolpath and cut on the inside of the line. So we'll just leave that for outside for the machining vectors. And again, I haven't added tabs or anything. I'll, I'll do that in a moment. I just want to show you what this looks like when it's all trimmed out. So this will be our, you know, profile to let's select all the vectors. Selecting the vectors, holding the left mouse button down and dragging around to select them all. Or we could right click and go to selection, select all vectors. Or we could use the control A shortcut. Either way, we need to select all the vectors. So we'll calculate this toolpath. Now, there's one open vector still uh, and it's being ignored, but I... The software is ignoring it, but it might be a vital vector. It might not. So let's hit cancel and let's search for that open vector and see if it's a vital one. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to selection and select all open vectors. Okay. Now I just told it to select all open vectors, but I'm not seeing anything right off bat. You know, I'm not seeing any pink there or anywhere. So that tells me it's kind of insignificant, but I, I, let's get rid of it. You know, so I just told the software to select the open vector. I should now be able to zoom in to that selected object and it takes me to that vector. And so oh, let's zoom into that selected object and there's that vector. And if I uh, select that vector, that little vector, if I zoom out, that little vector was a little speck of nothing in the middle of this sea, way, 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 way in there. So I'm just going to hit the delete key on the keyboard to delete it because it's not valid, not valuable. All right, so we're going to select that once again and hit calculate. Reset our preview and preview that selected tool path to cut out. And again, we can get rid of our waste material. Double click on the waste, we'll remove it. Lots of double clicking, lots of double clicking. Trying to do this fast so we can get on to the next one. Uh, we're not doing too bad. It's only eight o'clock. So, you know, uh, we're doing pretty good. We, we're going to have enough time for one more and then we'll do some Q and a, cause I don't want to go into nine o'clock. Uh, I want to go eight 30 maximum. So we got plenty of time to do one more and <clears throat> there we go. So not a bad looking, you know, monogram in itself, you know, and uh but let's go back and let's let's uh let's explore one thing i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to turn that layer off i'm going to create a new layer just because i want to be able to i'm going to take and draw a rectangle like we did before i'm going to offset that rectangle inward a quarter of an inch like we did before i'm going to take and while that rectangle selected I'm going to type in chambers like we did before, keeping everything the same uh, with a stretch on the uh, vertical and I'm going to click apply. I'm going to come in here and I want to hold the shift key down. I want to scale this in a little bit and I want to stretch this out a little bit. Not much, I don't need that much overlap. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm watching this up here as my overlap. If I hold my shift key down, I know the bottom is gonna be the same as the top. So just a very little amount of overlap there. All right, and yeah, looks good. All right, now the question was, can we weld this? Well, the first thing we have to do in order to weld it is we need to convert the text to a curve. 
then we need to automatically group it back together. Immediately group it back together. Now if we select that object there in our rectangle and we hit the weld tool, let's see what will happen to our design. Bummer. I was hoping that would work. So no, weld is not an option. All right, let's undo that and let's see if we do a different selection. Let's select this first and then the weld, the rectangle and weld that together. No, because a weld tool removes everything from within a perimeter of a design. So we're going to undo that and we're going to come in and we're going to use the trim tool like we did before selecting our rectangle first and then the chambers last because it is the boundary and we're going to clear everything inside the boundary and we're going to close that tool then we're going to select on the name chambers and the text and delete it and then there we've got we've got our name you know so the weld tool will not be an option now Glenn pops up and says select all. So he wants the outside rectangle as part of it as well. Okay. So do we want to group the two rectangles together, Glenn? Yes or no? Uh, let's, uh, do we want to group the rectangle? Let's group the rectangle as one. And then this here. And let's weld Aha, Glenn is on to something. That worked out beautifully. Look at that. That worked out very well. Glenn, awesome job, brother. You got it. Uh, that worked out very well. Very, very well. So let's, let's recap quickly on what we did there. So we had our two rectangles. We had our text. We converted that text to a curve and then we grouped it back together. We selected the two rectangles and grouped that together as one object. And now we are welding this object with this object. And when we click the weld tool, Bob is your uncle. There we go. Nice work. Boom, boom, boom is right. Glenn, very nice job. Good call on that. So there are now, again, as I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And Glenn just pointed out there's a second way to achieve this. Let's turn off layer three. This design here. One, using the trim tool. Two, welding. We just have to make sure that we have both of the rectangles selected and grouped together. We have to have the text Converted to a curve and group together, and then we have to select both of those items and then weld. Nice job. All right, let's turn that layer back off. Let's turn layer three back on and delete that. I love it when you guys, you know, interact like that. Now, how well will this work with an inlay? How well will this work with an inlay? Um, Ronald, I'm assuming it would work very well with an inlay, depending on what you're wanting to do. You know, we could we could do a you know a monogram type inlay where everything is inlaid, absolutely, because you're creating an inlay pocket, and you're creating a uh, you know an inlay male part you know that you're cutting out and you fitting the two together. You could really come up with some really nice looking stuff. Now, for our third monogram, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I want to show you in person, not in person, but I want to. Uh, show you uh, one that we're going to do monogram and I'm going to type in CNC monogram and we're going to look at some images just to give you you know some you know design options now here is a a reversal uh, look at there there's a reversal of what we did here where the letters, it actually looks really cool, uh, where the letters are stayed and everything around the letters are cut out. That would be a weld option. That would be a weld, uh, like Glenn and, and, and all we just talked about, if we welded that with the letters coming in. That's pretty cool, you know. 
uh, you know, here's something similar to like what we just did. You know, here's another, you know, uh, option there and things like that. But the monogram <clears throat> that, uh, you know, the monograms I like are, um, and then of course, here's some options too. That's pretty cool, right? But I like this. I really, really like this. I like this box design where the name is coming up the side and everything. Uh, that's super, you know, uh, simple to do. I like that design a lot. Um, and I really like where, you know, the outside border is not just a boring circle or something where it has some flair to it. And I've seen some of you guys during the Christmas holiday, you made some monograms with some snowflakes and stuff, uh, you know, um, deer antlers and all. And I have those monogram files, you know, for the deer antlers and all. And I have an anchor. I want to show you the anchor. But this really, really is just awesome to me. And I want to show you guys this uh, just to, to give you something to think about. Look at that outside border. That you know, what a flare. You know, what a really nice design there. Uh, check out this Andrews here. You know, with this kind of uh, flare and on. We could always draw or bring in an image. You know, with some viney looking stuff. Uh, you know, that's pretty awesome. You know, you can kind of see some of those things. Very, very cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> monograms where the names are underneath. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff, you know, all the way through it. You know, here's a, you know, monogram type, or not name, it's not a monogram really, but you know, just cool stuff. Uh, think about that, you know, when you're doing monograms, you know, get really creative. There's some creative people out in the world. Uh, and uh, you can you can you know they lead by example so they're showing you examples of some of the things that they've done uh, that's cool with a little uh, nice little glass backer that's awesome actually um, and 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 things like that uh, this is kind of what you know I was going for here with uh, that first design nicely done young lady um, so you know when it comes to the monograms you know some really really cool stuff now um, you know, also uh, thinking outside the box, I really I thought I thought this was pretty cool too. You know, uh, it could be a, you know it would have to have a backer with some color in it and all you know to make it pop and stuff. But get decorative with your borders. You know, they don't have to be just a plain Jane old circle. You know, get decorative with your borders or just you know plain old monograms and things, all kinds of stuff. But I want to I want to go back to our Vetric. And I want to open up an existing file that I've got. So I'm going to click on open. And I want to go to an existing file. And I want to go to my, um, where do I want to go? I want to go to my documents. <clears throat> and I want to go to, bum, bum, bum. Is it under digital store? Uh, new, it's not under digital store. Where is it at? Digital woodcarver sales, CNC files. Nope, that's not it. Sorry, guys, we'll get there. Hold on a second. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. Nope, not in there. All right, we're gonna. Open Sesame and Pictures. I'm gonna, I know it's on my flash drive, so give me two seconds to plug that thing in. Uh, it is plugged in. Oh, I love that. I was prepared for this. Okay, so let's come over here and let's find our. Uh, anchor, that's what I'm looking for. So, oh, oh. no, I don't want to save changes to that. I'll create some files for you guys. All right, so here's a pretty cool little uh, basic, simple anchor design. Um, you know, you can get a little more creative with your, your monogram or what have you, but, uh, you know, when you have those vine monograms, your border can be anything that you want. Now, if you notice here, what the key thing about showing you this is every single um let's pop over here i hope that's not the right monogram file you booger all right well um that's the wrong file let's go open 
where, oh, where are you hiding? Stand by, guys. I have seemed to have missed placed. Well, where in the hell are my files? <laughs> Yeah. You don't know, right? You don't know where they are, do you? All right, open. Da, 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 da. Documents. Digital woodcarver sales, digital store. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm an idiot. Public. C, uh, C drive. Thank you very much, Laney, for reminding yourself. Uh, C drive. Public. Your users. Public. Public documents. And. Oh, I thought I was so good. Don't close. Well, shoot, guys and girls. Um, looks like I won't be able to show you that one right now. I will post that file up. Uh, I have a set of, and I know it's on the flash drive. I have a set of antlers um, that uh, every letter of the alphabet um, is on there. And antler profile. It's right there in front of me. It's the word antler. Thank you. Uh, let's open that up. Uh was that did that say antler or ankler ankle open it up that's anchor well what the heck am i all right we can't waste too much time on that we got to get moving um so i will find that uh file it's a monogram file of uh deer antlers and it's got all the letters and everything all the files are done and um I will share that with you guys and girls because I like you that much. All right. That being said, let's go ahead and let's move on to our next design. Um, let's close this. And we're going to do our final monogram. We're going to create a new file. Again, 18 by 18 by a quarter of an inch. And <clears throat> I, uh, this time, am going to import a bitmap for tracing images and I'm going to go into my downloads not into my downloads I'm going to go oh here we go again we're like searching for files I had all these files nice and ready to go but for some reason it's not there all right, let's go into CNC. Where is it at? Uh, show, show, show items. There we go. Show class, black and white clip art. Oh, I keep forgetting I'm on my home, my office computer. Uh, camera roll, black and white clip art. There we go. This is the this is the folder I was looking for. All right, so let's go into our black and white clip art. Colored clip art works as well, uh, and and things like that. But you know. Here, um, we have, uh, you know, all different kind of things we can do. And the one uh, thing that I wanted to do was kind of a, a tribal monogram type design. I like the tribal designs and things. Um, so uh, let's see which, which of the two tribals I want to use. I want to use this one. All right. Now I'm going to zoom into that. I'm going to open up my trace bitmap tool and I'm going to convert this to a black and white. And I'm going to fill that in right about there. I could probably draw that a little bit better. Always use a high quality image, uh, but this will work for what its purpose is. And I'm going to click apply and close. I'm going to get rid of that picture and then I'm going to ungroup this and delete that. 
Now, with this, I'm gonna go ahead and size it up. Uh, I'm gonna double click on it. Let's center everything up so I can see what's going on here. And I'm gonna hold down my shift key and grab this and just scale it so I can uh, come in and move it down somewhere right about here. And then I'm gonna draw a line. I'm gonna draw a line uh, snapping from this point to this point here. And with that line, I'm gonna take this entire object except for the line, and I'm gonna group it together. And then I'm gonna, with that group together, I'm gonna select the line and I'm going to open the mirror tool. Okay, mirror selected objects. And the reason why I drew that line is because well, now that I have this line in here, I have a option that pops up. You know, if that line was not selected, this is grayed out, flip about line. But if I now that I have this line in here, I can flip that about that line. Okay? And I'm just basically creating a mirror copy, flipping it about that line. And now I've got that, I can delete this line. And I'm going to take this object and I'm going to just literally, I'm down arrow, down left arrow, I'm just kind of just moving it down. Bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down to right about a little bit further. Right about there. Don't want to go right about there. Let's go a little further. Yeah. All right. So with that, I want to rotate this bad boy. Uh, I'm going to group it all together as one item, and I'm going to rotate it uh, 45 degrees. So open up the rotate tool, and I want to go off of its center 45 degrees. That should bring me about almost about straight. Um, I'm trying to figure out which way. I want to go up and down like this here. And I, since uh, the I'm a little cockeyed, I'm just going to freehand off the center. I'm just going to pull it to the right and just straighten it out. There we go. All right, now I need to trim. I need to do some cleanup and trimming and everything. So I'm going to use my interactive trim tool. And I'm going to uh, trim away. Oh, I got to ungroup everything first. Sorry, ungroup. And ungroup again. I'm going to use my interactive trim tool and I'm going to trim away this line, this line, this line, and this line to blend that together. Uh, I'll go ahead and trim away that line. This little rectangle, I can, I'll delete that in a minute. I won't let me trim that. Over here, I'm going to trim away this line, this line, this line, that line. And I don't necessarily need that V right there. So I'm going to go ahead and while I'm here, I'm going to select this and delete it. This, delete it. I'm going to open up node editing. I'm going to click on this line right here. Uh, well, first, I'm going to click on this line right here. And then I'm going to go into node editing. And I'm going to delete, with no editing, I'm going to delete that point and uh, pull that just into a V like that. All right, now i got to come up here with my interactive trim tool and trim away that overlap there. And I should be good with that. And now I need to delete these little squares. Now there's a few more of those little squares, a little noise I don't want. And I can use my interactive trim tool. Again, I am going to delete these lines there. I'm going to delete that line there to bring open that up to it. Delete this line or trim, should I say? I keep saying delete, but and then I want to trim one, two, three, four lines and just making all of this one vector. So now, and I got oops, I got one more little guy right there that I want to get rid of and I'll delete that I don't need that in there all right 
let's see, is there another one? Yeah, this one, I'll make it match. Okay, now uh, with this I will, since I did some trimming and stuff, I will right click and select all open vectors. There are no open vectors in the design, very good and all. And I'm going to go in and import my monogram. So we'll go back to our monogram files. DXF, I like the DXF. Uh, for this, what the heck, uh, let's go with my initial, the letter L. It can be anything you want it to be. All right, so with the L, I'm going to group that together while it's selected. I'm going to hold down my shift key after I throw it in transform mode and size it down. And F9 for me, we'll put it in the center here. Now this monogram is going to be uh, floating in just a couple of areas. It's going to be held up by these two pegs uh, here on the side. This one, I'll probably stretch the L because I want it to be connected by these two pegs here and then a little bit on the side there. So I am going to stretch that L down. Oop, not much. Not much. Almost like it's trapped inside those vines. A little bit more. Yeah. All right, and with that, it is pretty well centered. Uh, I will check and make sure everything is centered. Um, let me group this uh, tribal back together, group. And I'm gonna make sure that that is centered on my board, which it is now. I'll take this and make sure that's centered, which it is now. And now I can go ahead and ungroup everything so I can interactively trim and so for this um, I need to kind of uh, you know connect this stuff together and there's some things that we have to you know we've got this tribal band but it's not it's not one piece all these pieces are kind of floating around and all so we need to do some extend and trim extend and trim and all to so there's a little bit of cleanup and probably pick the the last design to be the hardest and all but uh, let's go ahead and do some trimming so we're gonna trim away this line 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 uh, I can just get rid of all of this because it's gonna be hidden behind the L anyway and then we're gonna Join that together. Come over here and uh, we'll get rid of these spikes since they're hidden by the L there. Oh, undo because it wanted to delete everything. Let's get in there and trim that away appropriately. Oh, oh means, oh, it's wanting to get rid of the wrong line. So zoom in further and then we should be able to clean up. All right. So now right here, we got a little bit of a nub sticking out. If I close this tool, will it pull that into alignment? Yes, it will. So closing the tool brought it and closed it up for me. All right, so that takes care of that. This little part right here, we don't need. And <clears throat> delete that out. And this part right here, I don't need. Delete that out. Um, let's look up here. And we'll get rid of this line and this line. Oh, 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 oh. Zoom in. Oh, one more time. Let's get rid of this little overhang right here. Now let's get rid of this line. Oh, you booger. Sometimes you got to zoom in. Sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, things want to go away that don't need to be going away. There we go. All right. 
so with that I'll close that tool and join all that stuff up you know automatically and then last but not well not last but not least but you know we'll come in here and delete not delete but trim this line oh come on now zoom in real tight to it so it lets me clear that line out we'll clear up this line I'm zooming in real tight so it gets me to where I need to trim get rid of that line and get rid of that while I got the trim tool open we'll come over here and I'm gonna trim this line away this line and this line this this and this all right so now I can close that trim tool for a minute I can select on this and delete now it's almost like putting a puzzle together you know um, what you know what's the best way to connect this so all of this so none of these pieces are floating and uh, is there any pieces that we want to keep and things like that well I'm we're, we're gonna do half of this uh, you'll get the idea we don't need to run through the whole thing but we're gonna we're gonna do part of this up here and everything uh, so you can kind of uh, you know uh, get it but there's 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 a few ways to do things uh, I could use the uh, line tool I could snap from here to here, hold down my space bar or hit my space bar, snap from here to somewhere up here, space bar, and that, you know, now I can come in and literally, you know, now that I've created that bridge, I could come in with my scissor tool and delete uh, everything that, you know, needs to be deleted to kind of, uh, you know, uh, group this um, stuff together as one item one continuous line right there now you know same thing over here uh, line or arc tool doesn't matter you know whatever you want to do I'm gonna do the line tool just quick and simple um, space bar to finish off your lines and now I can come in and trim you know this 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 and that opening that up, you know connecting that and opening that up and you're going to continue this process you you can do all your lines and everything and then come back and trim but it kind of gets you know especially a design like this it gets a little uh you know um confusing as to where those lines were and what needs to be trimmed and don't so i kind of just draw and then trim and i actually drew that line a little backwards or a little long so trim and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to get rid of that line. Trim that away, this away, this away, this away, this away, and this away. You know, and now that makes that one continuous piece. So now all of this is connected together. Okay. Um, again, and, you know, keeping, keeping uh, things going. Uh, line tool. I'm just just and this is what the great thing about smart snapping is I can just snap to certain points no there's no rhyme or reason where I'm snapping to I'm just kind of you know creating a process uh, so that way I can come in and blend these guys together you know so it's all oh, there's a little nub right there oh, a little bit of an intersection right there there we go. And it closed up for me when I close. Oh, undo, undo, undo. All right. So on this intersection right here, got a bit of an overlap going on. And so I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm going to go into node editing mode. And I'm just going to pull this node back to this point to get rid of that intersection okay so now I've got these now this is still an open vector you know it's two items but by doing that um, let me go into node editing and let me pull that down just a bit so it snaps to that line there we go um, that's still an open vector so I need to join 
click on select both of them in the join tool I need to join those together and there's still one open vector so that means that one of my vectors did not close somewhere around here uh, so let's right click and select all open vectors and it's this one right here and most likely there's an overlap in one of these little things so if I come to the join tool it's gonna say I've got nine open vectors so there were some uh, things that were left open if I click I'll have three open so I'll join that and right there I could see it right off the bat where my line was that was one of the open vectors and it couldn't rejoin so I'm gonna trim that line away and that should clean that up so now if I select all open vectors let's zoom out and see what's open here right click select all open vectors uh, there's still something open zoom in to that selected item and it's right here this little hook I forgot to trim away this line right there and now I should have no open vectors in my design so there's always a reason for an open vector we just have to find out what that is now I'm gonna stay up at the top work my way down you know work my way around and everything so all this is connected now even by that little bit so I don't if I wanted to I could blend this together and this together and make it you know more stable or or what have you but you get the idea we're just I'm literally just connecting points spacebar to finish off your line connecting points and that allows me to take my trim tool and come over here and turn those few items into one item all right this one will not trim most likely because it's an open there's no it's not intersecting anywhere but I'll give it a shot oh yeah it did all right and then pull that together so now that's one open or you know one continuous piece and so you get the idea um, once all of these you know but the whole point of this is and I'll finish this one up and I'll share a picture on Facebook of uh, you know what the preview looks like and stuff but the whole point of this is is you can go creative with your boundaries uh, and I was using a tribal boundary but you know uh, where is that example at you know you know think about you know the little curly cues and the swirls and the this and the that and whatever the case may be get real creative and you just need that continuous vector around you know that point and that's all we're doing in the vcar pro software is we're making that continuous vector and then we can profile cut this out and make some really this one would look kind of demonalistic you know a little uh, tribal you know pretty badass I don't know um, and uh, go from there now that being said let's go ahead and uh, it's 852 let's spend a few minutes doing some Q&A let me jump over into the uh, Facebook group and make sure and see if uh, anybody's got any comments in the video section I don't see anything let me refresh this in the Facebook group and uh, so no nobody's commented down there yet um, let's go ahead and let's talk uh, let's look at our chat window here and uh, the floor is open for questions any questions let me know This is an open forum for questions. It does not have to be related to this particular type of project and monograms. Uh, if you have a question, you want to see something demonstrated, uh, you know, Laney, how do you do this? Or Laney, how you do that? This is the perfect time to uh, do that. Uh, and um, uh, while we got everything open, we can, uh, you know, share it. So go ahead and if you got some questions, let me know. Now, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go up and
Well, you guys are an easy crowd tonight. You guys are an easy crowd tonight. Wow. No questions. My, that must have been a basic class then. You must know how to, y'all got it, y'all got it. So y'all are getting more and more advanced. I'm going to have to get more and more advanced with you. <laughs> all right, look at that. Oh, that's all closed up. Good. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, are we going to have a class on the laser? Well, Wayne, here's a uh, uh, very simple answer to that. Yes. And also... Anything that we create in the Vetric software, we can laser engrave, whether it's a pocket cut, um, zero start depth. I'll make it a .02 so you can actually see it. We would choose our digital laser tool and we would calculate that design and we could preview that selected cut and if I add a little bit of laser burn color to it you know you've got a laser etching so everything you do in the software, creating your projects, your, your, your designs, any of your designs, any of your designs can be laser cut. Um, and so you just have to make sure that you use the laser tool. Uh, typically, we do not want the Z-axis moving up and down, so your cut depth will be zero, okay? Your, you will edit the digital laser and your power, your spindle speed, is your laser power. Zero to ten. Okay, ten being the highest maximum power. And so right now I have a power of eight, meaning I'm gonna, you know, engrave pretty decent depth, you know, with this. But I could I could back this down to six, five, you know, go up to ten, depending on what I'm doing with. Uh, so the spindle speed is your power with your laser and you will adjust that appropriately and that's by clicking the edit button for your laser tool for your tool when you when you choose your digital laser tool your edit button you'll change your power depending on how much burning how deep and how you know you want to do now from there we don't want we're going to set the z axis where the laser is 2 inches above the material so we do not want it moving from that. When we zero that laser out two inches above the material, we don't want it moving up and down and things. So we will set the cut depth to zero, okay? Cut depth to zero when we calculate this toolpath. Now, when I calculate this toolpath with the cut depth to zero, if I tried to preview it, it won't show anything. It will not show anything and um, you know, if I tried to, you know, preview this toolpath now, uh, you'll have a blank board here because a cut depth of zero is a cut depth of zero. So if you want to preview what it would look like temporarily, be sure not to forget to go back and change this to zero, but make this 0.02 and hit calculate. Um, that way you can see it in the preview. Okay. But be sure to change that cut depth back to zero. Uh, when you calculate the toolpath to run, because that is going to be the, um, you know, you don't want that z-axis moving up and down. So we could very easily laser etch, you know, that in. And that's just a simple profile. We're removing material from within the perimeter of the design. Now, if I were to laser this as a, or a pocket cut, I'm sorry, was what we did. But if I did a profile cut with the laser, and again, I'm going to go 0 0.02. Uh, I'm going to choose my laser tool. And I want to be on the line, on the line. And I'm going to calculate this. If I reset the preview and preview that selected toolpath, 
you know it would look like that let's add some color so you can see where those lines are getting burnt you know so it would be just laser etching or engraving the outside of the line you know it's not cutting out the inside area so we're just doing a profile with it okay so a profile or a pocket or you could use the engraving tool quick engraving tool outline or fill either one uh, but the profile and the pocket uh, tend to work better uh, I've discovered so that's you know but yeah we'll do a class on the laser but the class isn't the, there's nothing different we're just creating a design and it's when we calculate the tool path we're using the laser tool so um, you know but it, it, it's 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 nothing you know different all right so now the um, next question uh, did they say the new touch off block directions will be explained? Yes, I will be explaining the new touch off direction block directions uh, in a video, uh, not a live video, but I'm going to be making a video going all through different ways of using the X Y uh, the digit DWC Quick Set tool, and um, uh, I will uh, I will release that video here very very shortly, like a day or two or so. I'm going to try to get it done. Uh, so that you can see how to set up the tool, how to attach the tool to your, your machine, how to set it up in the controller software and how to use it, what options in the controller software you use for that touch off. Uh, so yes, I will be explaining that, uh, Peter. Um, do you have the files yet for the MK3 board? Debbie, do I have the files yet for the MK3 board? Do you mean uh, the setting files for like TNG? Um, we have for the 2440 MK3 4, uh, MK3, MK3 4, uh, we have those. Um, that, that setting file is in the Facebook group, but there are the, the setting files for the fourth axis or for the mini carver are not posted yet for those setting files. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, those, so, so that setting file, if we look at the Facebook group, we'll come back over in the Facebook group to the file section. In the file section of um, Bob, you'll have to set up an account um, and uh, you know, you'll be able to post in there, but can you join vectors and then mirror them? Yes, yes, you can. Um, depending on how you're wanting to do that, Bob. But let's go real quick. The DWC TNG, let me minimize Bob's question for a moment. The DWC TNG setting file for the Digital Woodcarver 2440 unit is right here um, in the uh, software. There's also a download and install setup instructions for TNG uh, and um, then there is also the PDF for the TNG. I have not yet posted the setting files for fourth axis or for the mini carver. Okay, I've not yet set the files for those yet. Now, Bob, back to your question. Uh, can you join the vectors and then mirror them? Well, if I joined, uh, yes. Uh, so Bob's question is, is rather than mirroring this, mirroring this and then going through and joining all the vectors since it was already half of it could I have went through and joined all of those vectors on that half and then mirrored it over so I only had to do it you know on one half of the design absolutely yes that would have been a quick and easy way to do it for sure yes sir uh, you can do that all right let's see here um, Let's see here. Can you weld this one? Can you weld this one? No, Jared, we can't weld this one because the lines are not overlapping. Okay? If there was some overlap in the design, then yes, we would be able to weld it together. Uh, but there is no overlap in there. Okay? Now, um, if I took and went into node editing mode and I grabbed these nodes here and here 
yeah and I use my down arrow key and you know overlapped that line there and if I go into my node editing here and I grab these nodes here and I use my up arrow key and over and just get it to overlap you know there then I could take this guy let's get out of node editing mode this guy this guy and my L is part of all that too uh, and I could weld that together and it would weld that together so you can do that but uh, we got to get those overlaps in there so that's in, in a sense I'm basically just drawing those lines and everything and then doing the trimming so um, anyway um, Joe CB asked this question at the show and uh, you know how do you reverse a flute well Joe that question is a tough one because you can't reverse a flute to where it goes up and over Joe just uh, if I can explain so everybody knows what uh, old Joe was talking about here um, let me turn off these layers for a minute and hide everything I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna draw an art I'm gonna pretend that uh, they gotta be there. And I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm gonna draw that art, pull that art there. And then I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna join those with two curves. All right, so imagine this piece here. This is the back of a chair and I'm, we're looking at it from the top down. We're looking at it from the top down. This is the front of the chair. This is the back of the chair, okay, the curve and everything. Now, on the front side, when this board is flipped over and everything, you know, we can run a, a fluting toolpath, and he's doing some decorative fluting and everything in there. But when this gets flipped over, when this gets flipped over, how do we create a fluting project to reverse the flute so it follows that arc? Unfortunately in the fluting toolpath these motions are down down and in down and in down and in uh, there is no way to reverse it uh, to go up and over so the only way that we can do that is to um, basically create a profile line and do a profile cut you know so that bit comes in and, and you know and, and cuts along that path but then that doesn't have that little nice little uh you know smooth little and you know where that that ramp comes in and out of the project um other option is is if you have the aspire software um you can create a uh, model and you can project that tool path that fluting tool path onto a 3d model that's what that is there. So you can draw a model of the design. Uh, uh, you, you know, if you if you have any CAD software, you you know uh, that uh, it does 3D modeling other than the Aspire. Uh, you can create that and import it in and and all. But there is no way to reverse the flute process so that it goes up. You know, kind of arcs over instead of down. And. Um, You, you can't uh, you can't um, go in um, you can't go down with it Joe and uh, when you asked that question at the show uh, I didn't have there was a lot of people around I didn't have a lot of time to answer you but I did have time when I got back to the hotel to research it to try it to, to try different workarounds and things like that and unfortunately uh, there was no way to reverse the flute okay the only way to do it is to create the model and uh, project the toolpath onto a 3d model uh, the uh, or just do it create a line profile depending on what a flute is a line that's it's just a groove that you're cutting in and but it has little in entry and out out you know sweeps and things and um, 
uh, unfortunately, you know, we don't have that option. Okay, hopefully that answers your question, Joe. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now, um, all right, what is TNG and why or why not should we change to it? Okay, Glenn, uh, TNG is, stands for the next generation. It's the next generation of um, the CNC USB controller software. Uh, in the software, they've 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 done a little a lot of bug fixes that that CNC USB controller has. Uh, they've uh, you know made things to where uh, you know it's a much smoother operation. You have a lot more controls in the back end. Uh, you know you have a lot more control in the back end. You can you can adjust speeds and things as it's running. Uh, you have a, you know there's there's a, there's a lot more flows. There's no downside to changing to TNG. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to encourage it uh, coming, you know, you know, in the near future that, that people change over. But you have to have the MK34 board in your control box, okay? And um, the way to uh, determine if you have um, the MK34 board is to, you have to open the board up and look at it. Uh, in some cases, on the license number, when you when you go and trying to open up the CNC USB controller program now, this is not TNG. This is CNC USB controller, and I am not connected to a machine, so it will not show me a serial number. But, but uh, there's at some point in under help activate license. In the license box, it'll show you your serial number, and your serial number should say the number then like MK34, or MK24, or MK3. It should the number should be after the serial number. That is not a surefire way of knowing if you have an MK2 or an MK34 board. Uh, the surefire way is to uh, open up the box and look at it. And uh, I'll show you a picture of the MK24 and 34 boards. And uh, I'm just using this uh, PDF uh, to show you the pictures of the boards. Uh, let's go down here. All right. So on your board in your control box, uh, in one way to know is if you have a control pendant that has the six by six pendant, uh, you know, with the gecko driver, um, the board is inside the six by six pendant. And um, most likely, if you have the Gecko driver, you have the MK24 board. Uh, most likely, not saying you do. But if you open up the control pendant or the control box on the board, it'll say CNC controller MK24 or MK34 on the board. Okay? Uh, MK24 or MK34, you know, on the board. All right? And, uh, you know, one other way of, uh, you know, uh, checking is uh, the serial number. I think it does say it on the back of the serial number, but uh, MK24 and MK34. Uh, so you'll have to look at the board. If you have the MK34 board, then you can update to the TNG. If you don't, you would have to update, uh, you'd have to purchase the MK34 board, uh, and it's around uh, $300, 287 or $300. Um, uh, let's see if I have it, I don't even know if I have it on the website yet. Shop, replacement parts. Yeah, the MK34 board is not on the uh, website yet, but it's about $300. Now, that being said, that being said, do you have to update to TNG from CNC USB controller? No, you don't. 
No, you don't. Um, and uh, so you um, you don't have to uh, update. You know, uh, if you don't want to spend, the, if you don't have the MK, th you know, three four board, you got the MK two four, and uh, you don't want to spend three hundred dollars to upgrade to you know the MK three board, uh, and and all of that stuff. Uh, don't. You don't have to. There's nothing saying you will. Um, the MK3 board will work. Um, MK3 board uh, is typically on our 4x8 machines. Uh, it's got an Ethernet and everything. Uh, you can buy the MK3 boards from us as well. But the MK3 board is a big... It's, it's, that's a bad boy board. That That's that's a little more than $300. It's like 400 and something. Um, and... Uh, it's it's got Ethernet and USB and and you know it, you know uh, expansion ports and stuff like that. A uh, little bit of overkill, Debbie, but you know, uh, yeah, it'll work. The MK3 will work. Um, the Mini Carver's MK3 uh, Mini uh, works as well with TNG. And uh, as far as uh, waiting to show you how to set this up, uh, set up TNG, I mean, in the Facebook group there, uh, again, you know, the files in the uh, Facebook group are there, the PDF instructions. Um, and in those uh, PDF instructions, yeah, I've got screenshots to tell you how to download and install uh, and the setting files, um, you know, bringing in the setting file and then how to connect to the program. And then we have to go in and write the email, the email to Vetric and send it off to them with the controller number and everything and then wait 24 hours to get an answer back. So, um, but there's, you know, there's a PDF there with instructions on the download and install of the TNG. Um, I will be creating videos uh, on this. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. Now, let's see here. Um, do we have to buy the new touch block? No, absolutely not, Antonio. Uh you, if you don't want to use it, you don't need it. You don't have to buy it. You know, we got a little uh, laser that's coming out, little uh, crosshair laser uh, attachment. Uh, you know, for finding center or you know help you know quick setup and all. A little crosshair laser. That's going to be about sixty nine ninety nine, uh, seventy bucks. Uh, that you know will be an attachment, and then you'll you'll be able to you have you have a choice of the. Uh, the edge finder or the laser or or using what you have now but you don't have to buy anything these are just accessories um, and uh, you know accessories you know they're the there it's a helpful accessory I wouldn't have come up with it if it wasn't but uh, uh, but it's but nonetheless it's an accessory so no you do not have to buy the new touch block if you want it you do it's not free <laughs> All right, so um, let's see here. Joe CV, you guys can see what he said there. He said he'll explain his current process for the back of the boards of the CNC, and he'll post it on Facebook with some pictures. Cool, I'd love to see that. Uh, absolutely love to see that, just to see what you're doing and everything. Um, Dave Garbett, uh, some of the touch blocks did ship out. And the others will be shipping out this week. So um, I think about half of them did. And then the others will be shipping out this week. So if you haven't got yours yet, uh, it will be coming probably, uh, you know, over the next, you know, th this week. Uh, Burl's shipping out uh, parts and things out uh, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and all that stuff. So uh, we were waiting on a part uh, to come in uh, for the um, for the touch block, the little... Uh, uh, rods, the little rod, steel rod, uh, probe type thingy, not a probe, yeah, but, uh, straight edge. And, uh, those came in. So, uh, the rest of the parts will be shipping out. All right. What else do we have for questions? And that was for Dave Carpet. Any other questions?
All right, let's look over on our Facebook group and uh, see if uh, Bob had any more. Oh, there's some right here. Okay, so does the DXF file with all the small lines affect the machine function, i.e. slow down because of the calculations? I noticed such an imported DWG file seems to get smoother. Uh, that notice using an imported DWG file seems to go smoother. Yeah, I mean the uh, you know you have nodes and everything uh, that are created, and those nodes are are points and on they're 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 uh, point coordinate points and everything. So those coordinates get written into the G code. So <coughs> excuse me. So the um, uh, those you know those nodes could be uh, cleaned up they could be removed uh, but there are five different file formats uh, you can try the EPS file versus the DXF uh, see if it gives you less nodes or you can remove the nodes and kind of uh, redraw uh, but yeah um, those nodes are coordinate points they end up being coordinate points so that adds to runtime and stuff uh, Tamar, oh my God, if I understand, I'm supposed to open up the little black box gecko box to see which board is in it. No, Jim, no, Tamar, not the little gecko box that's in the front of your thing, your big black control box or, or your six by six control pendant, the control pendant that was on the older machines, uh, 19, uh, 2016 and earlier models, 2016 and earlier models, uh, you have the little six inch control pendant. There's four screws on the back of that control pendant, black screws. You just take them off and the lid lifts right up. Be careful when you're lifting that lid up so you don't unplug the wires from the speed control, but you just take those four screws out. Uh, I am going to be showing this in a video, so wait, if you will wait for me a couple of days, a day or two, I'll have a video out showing you uh, where to look in the, what, what the 6x6 pendant looks like, uh, where to look in your box and everything. Um, let's see here. Uh, You've given up coach though, so you can afford your DWC accessories. <laughs> uh, can I get accessories for show pickup? Yes, you can order accessories for pickup at the show. You just need to let us know at least, at least seven to 10 days before the show so we can make sure that we have that part with us when we drive down to the show, we bring it with us from the factory, you know, from, from in, in Indiana. So give us a advance notice. Don't don't you know don't don't come to the show saying hey can I order this here and pick it up here and because we're not going to have the accessories with us. Um, but we bring router bits uh, with us to the show. We bring software. We bring you know we have we have some accessories and things uh, that we do bring. But to make sure that we have enough because um, we usually only bring what's kind of pre-ordered. Um, uh, give us a little bit of a heads up. All right. So Floyd Harris, how are the crowds at the wood shows? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You guys got, we got some new members. Be sure to, to welcome them as they come into the Facebook group. Uh, the Baltimore show, I sold eight CNC machines and, uh, the, uh, Columbus show I sold set. We sold, I shouldn't say I, uh, Burl and I, and, and all sold seven CNC machines. So, uh, we've got, um, uh, 15 new customers that are joining the Facebook group. So they're going to have some new questions and things. And you guys have been awesome about lending a hand and helping out and all of that stuff uh, and answering questions for people and all. And I've been monitoring, you know, everything. Uh, keep it up. Keep it up, you know, because we got some new members coming to the family. But the shows have been great. The crowds have been awesome. All right. All right, guys and girls, it is 923. Uh, I want to cut this off, so I'm going to give you another seven minutes of time, and then we'll have to continue this either in the Facebook group, you know, questions and answers and stuff, or in, you know, next week's 
video class because now there will be no class on Wednesday. There will be no class on Wednesday. I've got three machines that I've got to get refurbished and rebuilt and ready for the Tampa show uh, that I leave to Wednesday. So there will be no class for Wednesday. I've got to, I've got to knock these machines out and uh, I just don't have, I won't have the time for a class. So classes, uh, there will be a class Monday, this coming Monday. Um, any show in the Michigan area? No, unfortunately there was last year, Wayne, but no, there's no shows in the Michigan area uh this year um we just have ontario uh there's going to be a show in um there's going to be a show in uh hamilton hamilton ontario and then there's a show in woodstock ontario um and unfortunately i will not be at those two shows this year uh i'm not doing canada this year uh, but, uh, you know, they will be demoing and have the CNC's, the digital wood carvers and stuff at the show. You guys are very welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a wonderful night. Uh, Bob, be sure to set up that face there, that YouTube, uh, user account so you can log into YouTube and, um, uh, get on uh, those live questions and all, but this post, you know, it's fine. It comes right to the, you know, it's, I treat it just the same as the post and everything. Um, be sure to have some fun with those monograms. Uh, I'll, I'll create some, uh, border styles and things that you can throw monograms into and I'll send those files up on Facebook. I will then, uh, come in and, uh, add in the, um, add in the, uh, monogram files for you as well and all of that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, till next time, I'll see you soon.